Hi everyone, it's Gary here from Echidna Sewing and today we're going to be taking a look at the Brother NQ3700D and the NV2700 sewing and embroidery machines. So the NQ3700D is a Disney model. Now what that means is it has built-in Disney designs, it's licensed for Disney designs, and that's the only difference between these two machines. The um, NV2700 is a non-Disney machine, but everything else about the machine, the size, all the standard features, are exactly the same on both machines. So for the purpose of this demonstration today, I'm going to be using the NQ3700D, but if you are looking at the NV2700, it's the same machine. So uh, it's all the same information. All right, so I think what we'll do is get into it. And uh, first thing we're going to do is go through what comes with the machines when you get one home. Okay, so you've decided on the machine, you've got it home and you're about to open the box. So let's have a look at what comes standard with the machine. Now, as I mentioned before, these are sewing and embroidery machine combinations. So um, really versatile and come with a load of standard features. The first thing, of course, is um, it does come with an embroidery unit. So I'm just gonna pull this uh, to the front and show you that's what it looks like. That comes in the box with the machine. But right now I have the machine still just set in sewing mode, which is how it would come straight out of the box. Um, it does come with two embroidery hoops. So you've got your uh, your five by seven frame, um, which is your 130 by 180, and the 10 by six or 10 by six and a half, which is the um, 260 by 160 frame. So they're standard uh, as, uh, as supplied with the machine but I'll have a look at all the other things that come in the box on both machines, right? So this is covering uh, both models. Obviously there's a, a foot control, comes with it, and a power lead, we'll pop that over there, and um, we'll, go, we'll go through these other major accessories first. It does come with a knee lever, and I'll show you that when we get into the sewing functionality, because that allows you to lift the presser foot with your knee rather than having to use your hand. And um, of course, there is a, a little dust cover that comes with the machine. It's always good to put a dust cover on the machine when you've got it stored. <clears throat> Pardon me, just keeps it nice and neat and tidy. Oh, and I should mention that both the uh, embroidery hoops do come with your template sheets, which makes it a little bit easier for design placement, standard. Um, lots of good um, information in here. On the Disney model, this machine here, the 3700D, it does come with the Disney design guide. Now, as I mentioned, there are 55 Disney designs built into the machine and they are licensed to the machine. It also comes with the handy accessories guide from Brother and Brother have uh, so many um, accessories available and all very, very well priced. It's, they're one of the most affordable ranges of accessories in the market, but that guide does come in the box so you get a good idea of what else is available. Um, quick reference guide, I love quick reference guides because uh, we're all impatient, we get the machine home and the first thing we want to do is something and um, quick reference guides, uh, all the information you need there to get started very quickly, that's kind of handy. The full operation manual and a very well written manual of course and that's included in the box. Sometimes some appliances these days you've got to go to the internet and print that out and that's, that's a pain but it is included with these machines. And then the full embroidery design guide. So this has um, all the different designs. I think it's around 258 built-in embroidery designs on both machines. Um, and plus, of course, on this one, the Disney design. So that gives you 313 designs on this particular model. But that it gives you all the color sequencing and uh, good images of all the designs that are available in the machine. So that's standard in the box. Uh, the machine also comes with a little bit of other paraphernalia. Uh, it does come with a walking foot, so a bit of instructions on that. How to access the instructional videos that are available, and that's the world we live in now. You use these QR codes and it'll take you straight to the, the Brother pages for all the instructional videos. The design uh, database transfer software, how to use that, which is cool. And, um, oh, and also the LED um, drop light foot, which comes standard on both these machines. So you do get the LED pointer on both machines. So, uh, and there's a little bit of other paraphernalia. This is the um, template sheets for the My Custom Stitch function on the machine, which is an awesome function, and um, you're going to love that. Now, let's look at the accessories that come standard, 
Uh, first of all, we'll have a look at the little accessory tray here. As I mentioned, this is set up in sewing mode at the moment, so that tray does pop off to reveal the free arm. But inside that tray, this comes with a really handy little tray that holds your most used presser feet that uh, you would use for sewing, including a button sewing foot, or a button hole foot rather. The, um, we'll go across the row here, the blind hemming foot, the end foot for your applique, an eye foot, which is your zipper foot, the um, G foot, which is your overlocking foot, and of course, an M foot, which is your button sewing foot, some spare bobbins, and a um, the seam ripper that comes standard. And I'll just pop those back in because the uh, there's a load more feet in another little accessory bag, so I'm just going to make sure I put them in the right location. But they all have their own little home, which is great, and uh, helps keep everything nice and organized. And that's the end foot, and that one goes up there. And of course, that then pops back in the little storage tray, and there's even more room to store extra feet in there. But it does come also with this little accessory bag, which includes twin needle, a pair of fantastic little embroidery scissors, a dedicated bobbin case for embroidery. So that means you get much, much better embroidery results with a dedicated bobbin case. There's a little thread net there, little tiny uh, tension screwdriver, a little cleaning brush. Uh, that's the little eyelet punch you get a, seam, a quilter's guide, which uh, will work with the walking foot that comes standard with this machine. A couple of the little uh, thread spool caps there. Handy little screwdriver. A couple of screwdrivers for taking the feet off and the screws for the needle plate. You also get an open toe free motion embroidery foot. So that's included, standard in the machine. You get also an adjustable zipper foot, which can be really handy, great for doing piping and all sorts of things, as obviously as well as zippers. So that's included. An extra pack of needles. What else we got here? The little ruler guide foot. A quarter inch foot, which is um, kind of handy. If you're a quilter especially, or a patchworker. And another little uh, one of the um, thread lead off caps. The Teflon foot, so that's the non-slip or the the um, the non-stick foot, so that's great for doing difficult fabrics. And uh, another stand, standard little screwdriver, an open toe applique foot, and a another part of your thread um, system that holds the threads in place while you're while you're putting them on the machine. So that's all standard in the machine. It also comes with the LED pointer foot for embroidery. So that means you've got an LED drop light position marker on embroidery. We'll show you that when we show you the embroidery machine. Um, walking foot is standard. I won't take that out of the bag, but that is a standard foot with the machine, a walking foot. It even comes with quite a unique side cutter foot for kind of simulating what an overlocker does. It actually has a cutter on it that cuts the fabric for you, which is kind of cool. And an extra twin needle spool guide uh, for running twin needles on the machine. So it comes very, very well equipped. And there's even a little accessory uh, a sheet in there which actually lists all the different accessories that you should have. So if ever you think you're missing something, you can go through and use that as a, a cross-reference. So, so that's everything that comes with the machine. It's really well equipped and um, great value. So now we're going to have a, a really good look at all the, the sewing features on these machines. Okay, so we've gone through all the different things that come with the machine. Now we're going to have a look at the uh, basic functionality of the machine and um, just how easy it is to thread and choose stitches and just have some fun. We're in sewing mode. And again, both these models are exactly the same in sewing mode. So um, let's get into it. Now, first thing you'll notice is this is quite an accommodating machine. In fact, it's 8.3 inches from needle to arm. So if you're a quilter and you, or you just you like that workspace, Really nice size machine, quite a good depth here too, I think at about 4.1 inches. So really, um, really a spacious machine. Now let's have a look at uh, what we've got under here. Your stitch panel is clearly shown up on the top of the, um, the cover here, and our threading path is all in the top there. Uh, very simple, very easy to get to. You're not sort of reaching over the machine, which is, which is really nice. Uh, let's have a look at these uh, buttons we've got here. Start stop button here. Now this machine does come with a foot control, but you can actually use it without the foot control if you wish and just use the start stop button. And that uh, works well with the speed slide control here. And uh, that's just magic because it means you can set the machine at a minimum or maximum speed to suit you. So depending on you know what level or skill level you're at. Uh, we've got our reversing button here. We've got the locking button or the fixed stitch button. So this you can put, hit that button and it will lock off your stitches for you, which is great. A needle up down button, uh, 
the magical scissor button. Everybody loves this. Once you've had a machine with trimming functions built in, you will never ever go back and not have a machine with scissors built in. And it has the auto foot lift. Now the auto foot lift is great because um, when you see a machine with that in the brother range, that means it has the um, automatic height adjustment as well. So it will adjust the height or the adjust the pressure on the foot depending on the height of the fabric, which is a really cool, uh, or thickness of the fabric, which is really cool. Um, a lovely big screen, almost a five inch screen here, which uh, is, is just so easy and beautiful to work with. Now, I haven't touched the screen yet because it's still in screen saver mode. So when you turn the machine on, it will go into a screen saver mode. Um, you can use your fingers on these. There's no, you're not going to hurt the screen with it. Or if you have a, a simple stylus, you can use that. Um, I'm going to use a stylus for now because it's going to kick my hands out the way, hopefully. So uh, let's just touch that screen and see what happens. And it is, it's come up in sewing mode because we don't have the embroidery unit attached. So uh, it's, it's kind of automatic. You turn it on, it will be all set to go. So as you can see, a really nice, um, a nice clean screen, nice and easy, a bit bigger than previous models and uh, easy to understand the information and the brother interfaces on their uh, computerized machines are just awesome. Um, down here you've got a back button and you've got your diff different menu options which we'll dig into as, as we move into it a bit. Uh, the machine also has a settings page and a help menu so there's loads of help information built into the machine which um, is, is really handy. Uh, over here, we've got your obviously your threading path up here. You've got your bobbin, drop-in bobbin down there. So the first thing we're going to do actually right now is load a wind and load the bobbin and then thread the machine. You're going to be amazed at how easy this is. Now, I'm going to be using um, a spool of Rosant sewing thread. Uh, it's, it's a great thread, one of my favorites. And a little tip to everyone, I say this every time I do a demonstration, always use good quality thread. Um, it just makes the world a difference, means you'll have less less problems, the stitching will be better, the machine will like it, and um, you just have a good experience. Good quality thread is important. Now, um, I'm going to grab the bobbin that is currently in the machine. I'm just going to lift the presser foot first. That makes it a wee bit easier to grab this bobbin out. So there is an empty bobbin that will be in the machine. And the bobbin simply goes up onto the bobbin spindle at the top there. I'm going to pop this spool of resant on the machine. Just pop that in there and pop my little thread cap just over the spool like so. Now, there's a, um, a couple of lines up here. Camera guy will get this, I'm sure. Uh, we've got a dotted line and a solid line. The dotted line is for threading the bobbin and all we've got to do is follow that sequence. So we come up to number one, down to number two, and across to number three, and then come across to the bobbin and follow the dotted line, follow what it says, wind it around there a few times, and just here, there's a little thread sort of cutter option here. And we just pop that in there, cut the thread off, and now the machine is ready to wind a bobbin. And all we've got to do is flick the bobbin winder across. The light goes orange down here, which means it's in bobbin winder mode. And if I hit the start button, it will now wind the bobbin. Now, I don't need to fill this bobbin, but if I did just let it go, it would fill and stop without overfilling the bobbin. We only need to go about halfway and uh, I'll just hit the stop button when we get to enough thread. In fact, that's probably more than enough. So if I hit the stop button now, I can now click the bobbin back across, take that off. I can use the little cutter up there just to cut the thread, nice and handy. And now we're going to thread the bobbin. There is a very uh, clear guide on the needle plate that shows you how to drop the bobbin in. Now this is the Brother Quick Set Bobbin System. And what makes this so cool is that you don't need to draw the bobbin thread. In fact, threading the bobbin is so, so easy. So the thread comes off and the bobbin will spin in an anti-clockwise rotation. So we just drop the bobbin in there like that, pull the thread around, bring it around here, and then just cut it off like that. That's it that's done. You don't need to draw the bobbin thread before you start sewing. That is amazing. So let's pop this little gray plate back on that which just clips under there like so, pushes down. Bobbin is all threaded. Now let's thread the needle. Okay, so threading the needle, I'm just going to take the thread that I just used to wind the bobbin. So we'll just unhook that and I'll just pull that back out through there. Now we're following the, the solid line now to thread the needle. So I'll start that fresh actually, so you can see right from the beginning. So we go into one, to two, 
follow it around. Now, I should point out at this point, you should always thread the needle with the presser foot in the up position. And clearly my presser foot is in the up position. Um, if it was down, this machine actually, and this is really nice, has a little sort of gate that closes, which doesn't let you thread the machine. So you kind of can't thread it wrong, which is nice. So I lift that presser foot again, and we come down to follow, find number three, and then up and across and into number four, down to number five, and then six is on the needle bar. At this point, I just give the thread a little bit of a, a hold there. There's number seven right there. So we just hook that up, and then we just hook, cut it at number eight, and all I need to do now, I usually put the presser foot down and then just with this little lever on the side here, one swift movement down and the machine is threaded, the needle's threaded and you can see there we're good to go. So we're all threaded, ready to sew. And to be honest, I could spend the next two hours going through all, probably longer, going through all the sewing, um, amazing sewing features on this machine. That's not the intent of this video. The video is more about just giving you a, as quick an overview as I can of the key features on the machine. But needless to say, there's a great range of stitches here and everything's in simple to follow menus. You've got loads and loads of utility stitches, stretch stitches. It has 10 automatic buttonhole functions. Uh, it, it's so sideways. Wait till you see that. I'm going to show you that. Um, loads of decorative stitches and um, lovely satin scallop stitches and, and uh, just just so much on here. And of course, a great range of, of large um, sideways sewing stitches, which give you, oh, some of them are up to 40 millimeters wide, and that's because the machine can sew sideways. So, But let's first of all, have a look at how easy it is to select a stitch. And on this lovely big color screen, it is just a matter of choosing the stitch you want, and the machine does the rest. You can override all the settings, but honestly, nine times out of 10 years, it's gonna let the machine do its thing. You'll notice here that whenever you select a stitch, uh, you've got your width, length, and um, shift keys available, your tension keys available. But you'll also see here that there's a black box behind most of the settings. And, and whenever you see a black box on these machines, that means that's the standard factory setting. So if I was to select the stitch length and width control and change the stitch length, you'll see my black box has gone missing. And that's because I've changed the settings. But if I go looking for the black box, I'm back to normal. Um, so really simple. Let's just get back out of there. First thing I'm going to do is select a straight stitch, center position. And I'm going to just show you how great this thread trimming is. So I just got a bit of white, simple white fabric here. We're not doing anything too flash. I'm going to lift the presser foot. Now you notice I haven't drawn the bobbin thread. I've even got the, the needle thread sitting above the um, the needle plate. So in the old days, if you were to start sewing like this, you'd be sure to jam your machine up. That won't happen on these machines. They're virtually jam proof. Now, as I said, I'm not using my foot control, even though it does come with the machine. I don't need to use it at the moment. I'm going to use the start stop button and we're just going to hit the green button. It will now start sewing. And I'm going to hit the green button again to stop. The needle stops down, and if I want to do it, uh, take that out, I just hit the scissor button, it will now cut the thread for me, and I can lift the foot, and there it is. We've actually trimmed the thread. You can see there's the tail of the thread right there. And if I wanted to start sewing again, I could just lower that foot, hit the start button, but I can also use this speed slide control. So right now I've actually slowed the machine right down to an inching speed, and here's one of the great things on computerized machines like this. Even though that's going at such a slow speed, it has the same needle penetration power as if I was going fast. So you could sew over heavy denim, um, leather, canvas, um, vinyl, all sorts of things, and then go right down to the lightest weight fabrics of voils and chiffons and that sort of thing without any problem at all. Again, hit the scissor button and it will do a trim. And then I can lift the foot. I can also lift the foot with the lever at the back, but honestly using the, um, the button right here is much easier. I did mention earlier too, it does come with the knee lever, which actually sits into the this little hole here, and that allows me to lift the foot using a knee action. So a lot of people like that. Uh, I'm not going to go any further with that, but that is included in the box. Now, another nice little uh, cool, cool feature is this has the ability to do an auto back tack, auto trim, auto foot lift. And uh, if you're a keen sewer, you're going to love this. So if I was, for instance, to push this button on, I now have my auto pivot button and um, I'm going to turn my auto 
um, reverse on and I'm auto trimming. And watch what happens now. Camera guy will get this, I hope. We're going to hit the start button. We'll just speed that up a wee bit. It's now going to do a back tack stitch to start the seam. And when I get to the end of the seam that I want, all I've got to do is hit that button there. It will now back tack, trim off this, the um, thread and lift the foot for me and I've completed my seam and I haven't touched anything. I've let the machine do it all for me. Now I did mention I also turned on the auto pivot function. So if I was to put that foot down and let's start sewing again and it'll come down. Now if I was to stop and I needed to pivot, all I've got to do is hit the stop button and the foot will automatically stop up for me and I can pivot my fabric and we might just come back this way. And all I've got to do is hit the start button because it has an auto foot down as well, which is great. So um, again, I've made my pivot. I just hit the button. I don't have to hit the foot, the foot button. And when I get to the end of the seam, I just hit the reverse button and it will now trim off for me and um, lift the foot and I can just simply move my fabric out. Okay, so we had a look at just the standard straight stitch and the automatic foot lift and the automatic trimming. But as we go across this machine here, you'll see you've got all your different zigzag stitches, basting stitches, stretch stitches, utility stitches, and it's just a matter of choosing the one you want. And, and what's really cool is the screen shows you a, an actual size picture at 100%. That is what you see there is exactly what's going to stitch. And if you go in and change that, I might grab one that's a little bit easier to see a change on. Let's go to that one. If I go in and change that, it will actually change on the screen here. So um, you really do get a good sense of what you're about to do. Now you'll notice here, um, I, I talked about those black boxes before. Um, and if I've changed something, one of the cool features on these Brother Machines is if I've changed something and I think, oh my goodness, what have I done? I didn't want to do that. There's a little button here that just resets everything on that screen back to the factory default, which is so, so cool. So a lot of people are too scared to push buttons. Don't be scared to push buttons. It's not that, it's not that complicated and it's very easy to get back to where you want to be. So um, let's just click out of that okay. And now, as I said, loads of menus in here and loads of different stitches that you can visually see up here. But if I click on the menu button down here, it'll cancel that. I can go into my, my various other menus. And this one gives me a, a whole lot more decorative stitches. I can see there's four pages of stitches there and I can scroll from page to page by just clicking down here. And we'll go back to our menu, uh, buttonholes. One thing I did want to get into straight away though was talk about uh, the ability for the machine to sew sideways. You're going to love this. So if I click on this little button here, I actually have got um, standard stitches going forward, backward, uh, and zigzags going forward and backward, but also side to side. So for example, if I had um, this piece of fabric here, we'll just pop that under the foot. Um, so I'm going to select the sideways sewing stitch and it's going to sew to the right, but you'll notice here it's now said, please put the N foot on. So I've currently got the J foot, so we'll do that. We'll just lift the foot and I'll just take that fabric away for a moment. Grab my N foot, which sits down here and all the feet are very clearly um, sort of marked. I can see that's the end foot. Now getting the foot off is really easy. We just simply click the little lever at the back, take the, the J foot away, pop the end foot underneath there and I'll just position that where I want it and lower the presser foot down. And then there it is. It's all locked into place now. Lift that again. Grab my bit of fabric. Now watch what's going to happen here. If I now hit the, um, the start button, it's actually going to sew in a sideways direction. And if I stop that there, I could come back the other way with a zigzag stitch, for instance. Now I'll go back over the top of that with a zigzag stitch. And let's just stop that there. We'll do a trim. And so without turning the fabric, I've gone left and right. How cool is that? Now you might wonder why that is useful. Let me show you a couple of practical examples. One of the things this machine has, because it has the sideways um, features, it, sewing features, is it gives me very wide, amazing decorative stitches. Now, if you're a quilter or you just like embellishing or doing decorative stuff, this is just a game changer. I'm going to choose a stitch in this menu here. And one that really stands out for me is I think stitch number 72, which is like a wave stitch. So in order for me to get that, that's the menu I want is menu number six. So I'm just going to go back to um, this function here. I'm going to go to menu six 
and it's stitch number 72. So we'll just go all the way through to 72. And it's super easy. Once you choose the stitch you want, there it is. Now this one isn't, it's, it's preset. I don't need to change anything, but watch what happens when I hit the go button here. I'll just speed that up as fast as it will go. And um, all I would do is, you know, basically keep my fabric straight, which you would do in normal sewing mode anyway. And look at this, this is a almost about 40 millimeter wide stitch and um, it's it's perfect, great for quilting borders and and uh, anywhere you want a big wide decorative stitch. And there's quite a lot of these stitches built into the machine. So we'll finish this last little bit here. It's gonna come around, oh, hopefully I'll get on there without stitching off the end, oh, I just made it. Could have done with a bigger piece of fabric, but that's all right. We'll get ready to stop that now as it comes around to the bottom. That'll do me. I'll do a trim. But have a look at that. That is about 40 something millimeters wide. How cool is that? So that's sideways stitching. And um, next, another cool feature is what we call My Custom Stitch, which is just uh, an amazing brother feature on so many different models. And this one has definitely got that feature. So to get into that, we'll go into, we're back to our main menu and we're going to click on this button here. And we now have a little screen that allows me to program in my own stitches. And you can create an infinite number of stitches using this feature. And I showed you right at the start, there's a, it comes with a little pack of like um, gridded templates. And uh, that's for creating your own design. So you can sit down and draw something. And once you've done that, you can actually transpose that onto this screen. So well, hopefully camera guy can see this. I might get my smaller stylus here. Now, I, these styluses aren't standard. I'm just using styluses that we, we already have, but pretty much any stylus will work on these machines. And you can see there's a little like pencil there. And if I move the arrow key and move that pencil and hit the set button, it actually sets a stitch at that point. And um, if I now move this down to say there and I hit set, and I'm just gonna make some sort of random stitch here and go set, and then I'm going to come back up and then move across to there and go set, and then I might come back over here. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just creating my own unique stitch, go set, and then we'll go back here and go set. And um, so I've created my own unique little stitch, and if I hit the test button, it actually shows me the stitch that I've just created. So you can program in anything you like there. You can create anything you want and you can then save that back into the machine's memory. But if I was to actually stitch that out right now, let's just lift my foot, you'll see that that stitch I've just created is, um, is going to stitch exactly as you see there. Another thing about these machines is they're lovely and quiet and um, if you are a nighttime sewer, you'll be able to confidently use these machines without waking up the rest of the household. I can guarantee you that. Let's just lift that foot up. And so that little stitch is um, quite unique and uh, you can create infinite options there and save them for future use. So my custom stitch is a standard function built into the machine. And you can also load in existing stitches and edit those as well, which um, again, just gives you uh, the ultimate creativity. It's quite amazing. Let's get back out of that. And I think it's a good idea to have a quick look at the buttonholes now. Buttonholes are one of the key features everybody asks for when they're buying a machine. You know, how many buttonholes does it have? Is it automatic? Is it a four step? These are fully automatic and you have a load of buttonhole, op uh, buttonhole options. Now your buttonhole foot is included in the machine and we'll just grab that guy out. So we'll, we'll get that fella there. Now I have a button over here that we're going to use. This is a reasonably decent sized button. It's a two hole button. And with the buttonhole foot, it basically sits on the machine like this and there's a little tiny um, slide that comes back there and the button actually sits in the back of the foot just like this here. Now to load the button sewing foot on or the buttonhole foot on we just release the foot that's on there, move that away, slide this guy underneath, I'll try and keep my fingers out the way and drop that foot down and so the buttonhole foot is now in place, it's that simple and there is a little lever on the machine here that we pull down and that now tells the machine that we are in buttonhole mode. We'll go and choose a buttonhole, menu four, 
Again, you've got a couple of pages of menus there. We're just going to take a very standard buttonhole, that one there. And all we've got to do is lift the foot, position the fabric so as that the needle is above the bottom of the buttonhole or the top, however you've got your fabric positioned. And I just hit the go button and that's it. Let the machine do its thing. It will automatically back tack at the end. It gets down to here. So there it is. The buttonhole is finished. Now I'll just hit the trim function there, cuts the thread, and we can lift that foot, take that out. We've got a lovely, that's a reinforced buttonhole actually, the one I chose. If I take the button out, it's exactly the right size. And all we would do is get our little seam ripper and um, cut the hole into the button, into the buttonhole, and you've got your buttonhole perfectly measured. It's that simple. And um, I'm also a big fan of sewing buttons on by machine. So uh, let's have a look at that. Sewing buttons on, everybody, most people I know will do it by hand, but honestly, if you learn how to do it on your machine, it's really, really easy and probably stronger and will last longer. So these machines do come with a button sewing foot and um, that's, this, that's the foot just there. And on this foot, we just simply slide the button. Uh, camera guy can see that. We slide the button between these little prongs here and position it so as that the button the button holes are just right lined up with the two little red dots on the foot. I'm going to take this foot off, the buttonhole foot, push my buttonhole lever back up, and I do need to go and choose my button sewing function. So we'll go across to stitch number in, the, in that menu, in the buttonhole menu. Now just before I put this foot on, when you're doing button sewing, we're going to disengage the, uh, the feed teeth. And it's really simple on this machine. We just simply take that off and there is a little lever at the back, flick that across and now we've disengaged the feeding mechanism. And all I've got to do now is pop this foot back on. So we're just gonna lift that up a bit, drop that down, that foot's now in place. So now that I've got my button in my foot, I've got my foot on machine. Now this is a pretty heavy, uh, thick button so I'm just going to get the extra lift that I can get from the machine. I'm going to put that down next to the buttonhole. I've got my button uh, sewing stitch uh, selected and all I want to do now is just turn my wheel and I'm just going to make sure that I've got the right width of, uh, of button sewing stitch and it could be a little bit wider so I'm just going to ch change that to say a 4, maybe a 5, 4.5. So all I've got to do now is hit my um, go button and it will do a perfectly sewn on button. And if I wanted it to be really double reinforced, just hit it again. And I can tell you now that button isn't coming off anytime soon. So let's just hit the scissor button. It trims the thread. Let's take that out. And there we have a perfectly sewn on button. And that's, that's a lock stitch button. So, and it won't come off. So we've covered a, quite a lot of sewing features here and uh, I could keep going, there's so much more, but um, I think it's time to have a look at some embroidery. So let's get the embroidery unit attached and see just what this machine's capable of. Okay, so changing over to embroidery mode is a very simple process. Um, all we need to do is add the embroidery unit and put that in place and of course change the presser foot because it does right now have the standard sewing foot on there and that is definitely not what we want to use for embroidery. Now, generally speaking, little tip, it's a good idea to switch your machine off when you're changing these feet over. The foot that comes with this machine for embroidery does also include the LED light. So you'll notice there's a little cable on the end which will plug into the back. We'll show you that in a moment. But first things first, let's take the foot off. Now, uh, you might lift the, lift the presser foot with the lever at the back and you can drop the standard foot off that you're using. Now using this little screwdriver, just simply locate that screw on the side there and undo that. And the shank of the foot will come off. So that's your normal sewing shank. And good idea is pop that away back into the little accessory tray there so you don't lose it. And that will sit just there nicely. Close that up. And we're going to now take the embroidery foot and you'll see here, this one you've actually got to take the whole screw off. So just quickly whip that screw off. 
Hopefully camera guy can see that and I'm not getting in the way. And we pop this around from the back and then just, so pop that screw on there like so. Do it up with your fingers until it's reasonably firm and then using the little screwdriver, just ensure that you've tightened that screw up nice and firmly. You don't want that foot coming loose while you're embroidering. So that's on there. And of course we do have the little cable that plugs into the back of the machine and we're good to go. So at this point we do need to put the embroidery unit on. So we just simply slide the free arm attachment or the accessory tray off, grab the embroidery unit and slide that on. Now remember the machine is switched off and that's very important that it is off when you hook in the embroidery unit and once you slide that into place it, it will click into place and you'll feel it clicking quite positively. And the good thing about when putting this uh, attachment on is it will automatically disengage the uh, feed dogs so you won't have to worry about doing that manually. It's an automatic process. And at that point we can switch the machine on and what you will find is the machine will turn on in embroidery mode. Touch the screensaver. It will give you a, um, a little warning. And the great thing about these machines is that it, it, there's always instructions coming up tell you, telling you what to do and what to be aware of. This is saying the carriage of the embroidery unit will move. So we click OK and it now resets the embroidery unit to a normal start position. Well, we're all set for embroidery now. Uh, we've got the embroidery unit on. I've taken the sewing thread off and I've hooped up my standard 5x7 or 130 by 180 hoop with some fabric and some stabilizer. And we're we'll going to be choosing a design in a moment. But there is one other very important thing I do need to do before I move forward. And that is I do need to put my embroidery bobbin case in the machine. Now, these machines do come with two bobbin cases. And I'm just going to grab the second bobbin case out of here. And um, I'll show you the difference in just a moment. I'm going to grab this little tiny screwdriver that comes with the machine as well. So the embroidery bobbin case on these machines is the one that has a red dot in the center of it. And um, that is an adjustable bobbin case and, and is ideal for embroidery. They're, they're, the two bobbin cases are essentially the same, but this one is more suitable for embroidery. The uh, initial bobbin case is sitting in the machine and I'm going to take that out using this little tiny uh, screwdriver here and we just undo the screw that holds this plate in and once we've undone that we can just undo it with our fingers and take that off. And then this plate does just slip off nice and easily and we can now take the bobbin case out. Now before I do, um, the machine has basically gone into safety mode. Now the minute I undo that screw and take that plate off. The machine uh, has lots of um, safety precautions and it won't let anything happen. So you, you can't push the go button, nothing will happen. You're not gonna hurt yourself. We are gonna take that bobbin case out. That is the sewing bobbin case. And you'll also note that that has kind of a tiny little bit of green paint on the screw there. So that's for sewing. This one's for embroidery. And we're going to pop this one back in and there's a little white arrow on the bobbin case and that simply needs to point to the white dot on the machine and we just pop that back in. Now it is important that when you're putting this bobbin case in that the machine is in the correct stop position and it is uh, if you're using the needle up down button it will always be in the correct position. Nice and simple. So we just take the steel plate now and put that back in position directly above the bobbin. Take the screw and then pop that screw back into that screw hole and nip that up so it's nice and firm. Always make sure that you do tighten the screw correctly. That's nice and firm. Bobbin case is in and now we can load one of our bobbins. Now I'm using a pre-wound bobbin here but you can wind your own embroidery bobbin thread on the machine the same way we did for the sewing bobbin uh, but in this case it is a, a plastic pre-wound bobbin that I have. I'm just going to pop that in, slide it around, thread it exactly the same way as we did for the sewing bobbin case and then we will just pop the little black cover plate or gray cover plate back in place. So we've changed over there. I can hit the OK button now. The machine goes back into embroidery mode. And we're able to um, now have a quick look at what is included on the um, in the embroidery menu. And of course you do get the, um, the design guide that comes with the machine, has all the different designs in there. But essentially if we click on one menu, 
it will show you another set of sub menus and in there you've got loads and loads of designs 258 designs built into the machine plus on this one an extra 55 disney designs are included as well uh, this tells me there are 18 pages of design so i can scroll from page to page by just hit, hitting this button if i choose a, a design it shows me a nice big view of it here and um, if I hit the set button, it will go forward and let me move the design, size the design, rotate it, uh, delete it, add, and, and do all sorts of editing functions there. But that's not the design I want to use. So I'm just going to go back and um, click OK to cancel that. So I've got a few menus in there. I've also got another set of uh, designs here. There's another 14 pages of designs. Again, I won't go through them all. You, um, you'll be able to uh, do that when you get your machine, but there is a lovely set of designs in here. You've also got your Disney designs. So there's a few different menus here, 55 in total, but ranging from classic Disney to Winnie the Pooh, some Disney princesses, Frozen, and a few um, Toy Story Pixar type, type designs as well. But it is just a case of selecting what you want and, um, and going forward. Now, before I do that, I'm going to actually choose a Disney design in a moment, but before I do, we'll also have a look at the two large monogramming fonts. So these are for doing towels and large monograms, really, really attractive, lovely fonts. And you can see by the scale of that design, it's, it's quite a big design. And in fact, that's 135 millimeters high. So you've got some really good sub, substantial designs built into the machine. Let's go back a bit here, go back again. Uh, you've also got a lot of built-in standard fonts. So these are proper embroidery fonts for putting names and all sorts of things on uh, your projects and you've got um, three pages. So what's that, uh, 12, uh, 13 different fonts, including a few um, foreign characters as, that, as well. So let's just go back there. We don't need those. You also do have a whole range of borders and um, shapes and that sort of thing that have all sorts of edging options on them as well. In fact, that's what I'm going to use to start and do this next, um, next design. So, Let's bring in uh, maybe the um, square design here. And you'll see at that point, I can choose the type of border that I want on it. So if I scroll across, in fact, I'm going to use that one just there and I'm going to go set. And now I want to resize that border. So I can click on the size button and I'm going to make that um, pretty much as big as I can to fit in the 130 by 130 hoop. So we might take that to about there. And that will do me and click OK. And now I want to add some other designs. So the beauty of this is you can do a lot of your editing on screen. So you can create and, um, and merge designs together, add text and uh, create a whole layout on screen. And that's what we're going to do right now. So I want to now click the Add button and I'm going to bring in, um, let's bring in, uh, I don't know, Minnie Mouse just because we can. So I'll grab Minnie Mouse there, go Set. So I've got mini, I've got the border, and now I want to add some text. It's really simple. All you've got to do is click the add button. I'm going to choose the standard font and I'm going to type in mini and we might make that a medium size and then we'll go I double N I E set. So I've now added the word mini. And if I wanted to move the word mini to the top, I can. I can also just click on the design on screen and move it to wherever I want it. But um, I want to make sure it's centered and right at the very top of that, that little bit there. That will do me. And I click OK. And now I want to put mini on a rotation or like an arc. So I'm just going to go to font edit and we will go array and we can shape mini around as a bit of an arc on the top there. And if you have a close look, hopefully camera guys got this. I really do want to make my border a little bit bigger. Now, the beauty thing here is I can go back and select the border that I had already selected and I can go back into my size options and I might make that a wee bit bigger again. And that's pretty good. I think the word mini works there. I might just even make it a little bit taller because I can and that's going to fit nicely. And now I want to add another word. So we'll click add, same font and we'll type in mouse, but we'll go to a medium size and then O and then you scroll across to the rest of your font there, S and then add the E and set. And I'm going to move that down. So you can see how easy this is to do. So we've got the word mini mouse. We'll just leave that going straight across the bottom there. And if I click OK and edit end, I've now got to a point where I can move the whole design around. So 
If I wanted to move this design up to the top of the hoop or, or to a different position in the hoop, I could. I also know that I've got black is repeated quite a bit there. One of the cool things on this machine is it actually has a color sort function. So if you've got lots of the same color being used and they're not, um, they're sort of independent colors within the design, if I hit the color sort button, it will actually mean it will stitch all the black first and then we'll come and do the rest of the design. So that's kind of, uh, kind of cool. Um, I can also trace my design here and I can set my center points and move the design around. If I now hit embroidery, I'm now ready to go and it's telling me my first color and in fact it has grouped three of the blacks together to make it a bit easier. I don't have as many color changes. So what we might do is um, whack our hoop in there. So we'll just pop the hoop in position. Now these are a slide on hoop and this is one of the really nice things. Each hoop has a, for the want of a better term, a key on it. And that's the key here. So when we slide this into the machine, the machine will actually recognize the hoop as being the 130 by 180 hoop. So uh, there's all, it's almost impossible to run over the hoop on these machines or, or clash with the hoop. So that hoop is in position. And um, what I can also do is pop this button on and I can turn on my LED pointer. So it's showing me where the needle drop position is. Hopefully camera guy can see that on the fabric there. Now I don't need to move this design. I'm happy for it to stitch in the center, but this is very useful if you're tracing your design or you're trying to find your start point. Having the LED drop light position uh, marker there is, is really cool. Um, I don't need to move it. We're good to go. All I've got to do is put some thread on. So let me grab, I want black thread. Now I'm using the Hemingworth thread here with the cap system. The good thing about the Hemingworth product is I don't need to use the little spool holder cap uh, that goes on. I can just sit my thread here and of course, in case you missed it the first time, threading these machines, super simple. You just follow the numbers, come around, we've got our presser foot in the up position, there it is, up, and we hook into the take up lever, down to number six on the needle bar there, number seven. And cut that off and then all I've got to do is put down, push that lever down and it's now threaded. So we're all good to go. I've got my machine threaded. Let's watch this stitch out and we'll come back and show you some more. Okay, so um, that design's now finished uh, and it was pretty simple, wasn't it? Well, easy, easy to create that design using the built-in um, the built-in designs on the machine. Uh, if we take that hoop out, we just pop this little lever up here. That now slides out nice and easily. And you'll notice there's no jump stitches there. So if you've ever had an embroidery machine in the past, sometimes you realize you've got all these jump stitches going over the place. This new model has jump stitch trimming, which means if it detects a, uh, a jump stitch, it will stop and trim that thread for you. And um, that's a feature normally only found in your higher end machine. So that's a very, very cool. But that, that's a great little design. Of course, that's a Disney design and only available on Disney machines. So um, nice and easy. Let's pop that over there. A couple of other things, if we hit the button there and go back to our normal screen, um, we'll go back. And if I wanted to save that design for future use, I could save it into memory. So you've got all your memory functions there. You've also got your trace button. So if you're trying to work out exactly where it's going to stitch, you can trace your design and um, rotate and all the normal editing things that you would expect. If we just keep going back there, I'm, I can go back and edit that design even further. But I'm finished with that one. Let's get out of there. Click OK. Uh, you do, it is a Wi-Fi machine um, and uh, that's great because it means that instead of um, only having the USB option, which this does have, you can use your USB stick to load a design on here. Um, the Wi-Fi option does let you transfer designs wirelessly using the Brother uh, Design Transfer app that, or, or software that you can load onto your 
computer. And you can also use the Artspira app, which is uh, free from Brother. You can download that on your Apple or Android um, smart device. And that allows you to send designs directly from your phone to the machine. And of course, they put up free designs on that Artspira app uh, well, every month there's some free designs coming up there. So that's pretty cool too. And you can even play and doodle and create your own designs on that app and send them to the machine uh, and stitch them out. There's not much more to tell you about on this machine. Um, it's just a really, really good value, high quality sewing and embroidery machine combo. They both are, but either the Disney version or the non-Disney version. And uh, of course they have the five-year computer and electronics warranty. They've got your three-year mechanical warranty. Uh, super quiet, super reliable. They use the standard sewing machine, flat back sewing machine needles, readily available and um, standard bobbins. So there's there's never any worries getting you know accessories, etc. for it. There are lots and lots of different hoop options. I mentioned earlier, it does come with two standard hoops, the um, five by seven or the 130 by 180 and the 10 by 6 or 6.5, which is your 160 by 260. But you can also get your smaller 100 by 100 hoop as an option if you like. There's also magnetic hoops available or a magnetic frame available for this one. And uh, we also have the full range of um, the easy frames, uh, which also will work on these slide on type hoop machines. So check out our website for that. That's the Durky Easy Frames. They're kind of cool as well. And uh, of course, loads of support from here, us here at Echidna and loads of support from Brother on the Brother um, uh, education pages and just a good all round um, versatile machine that would be at home in anyone's sewing room. So I hope uh, that's been of some assistance to you, a little bit of help in, in, in deciding what machine is going to be right for you. If you're not sure, uh, by all means, please contact us either you know, either by phone or by email or uh, messenger or whatever way you would like to do that and we will be able to assist and help you and direct you to the um, to the best sort of machine for your needs. So look, that's it for me for now. Um, happy sewing, happy embroidering. Cheers.